Welcome to the Wellness Zone podcast. Uh, today I'm here with Dr. Barry Sears and we're going to be talking about wellness. So Dr. Sears, let's get into it. Let's just first walk our listeners through what wellness is. Well, it's very complex. We don't have very many good definitions for wellness. Uh, we have lots of definitions for disease by the symptoms they present. But how do you know if you're well? Most people might say, well, I'm not sick, therefore I'm well. Not so quick. So one of the challenges we have in 21st century medicine, unless we have a good medical definition for wellness, there's no way we can maintain it for a lifetime. And so that's really the challenge. Now, one uh, definition I believe that's medically uh, definable is the absence of insulin resistance. And how would you, what is insulin resistance for someone who's familiar with the term, but doesn't quite know exactly what it is? It's a catch-all term. It's a catch-all term that says your metabolism is not working very well. Now, uh, what does that mean? Well, first of all, what does metabolism do? Well, it converts our, the food we eat into energy. It also controls our immune system. It controls our ability to basically um, repair damaged tissue. It controls our ability to live longer. These are all things you want, and you're only going to gain them by having an efficient metabolism. And if you have insulin resistance, you don't have an efficient metabolism and your health future is bleak. So would you say that the primary cause of insulin resistance is not having a metabolism that's functioning properly? That's true. Now, what's the cause of that? It turns out it's not a virus. It's not some type of, of you know, bacteria. It's the diet. And be, let's define it more. It's a pro-inflammatory diet a diet that creates inflammation in every one of your 37 trillion cells in the body. It's a diet that that inflammation that it creates causes your, your metabolism to become less and less efficient. And as that occurs, now you're more likely to develop chronic diseases in the future. Okay, so that was gonna lead me into my next question because you just mentioned the increase in inflammation. So what are some of the metabolic consequences of having this uncontrolled or having high levels of insulin resistance? Well, the first one, and most people can understand this, you gain weight. Say, so, mm -hmm. yipes, I don't wanna gain weight. It's not gaining weight, it's gaining weight basically in the abdominal region, belly fat. That's your first sign that you now have insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Now. It turns out insulin resistance precedes that. It's not the weight gain causes insulin resistance. It's the insulin resistance that causes the weight gain. So usually years ahead of the weight gain, you basically have already developed insulin resistance. Okay, so that's fair to say. If you're walking around with excess pounds, you probably already have the start. And that's kind of an easy indicator to go by. Um, and as we walk around the streets of America, say we seem to have a lot of people who have insulin resistance. Right. And so, Dr. Sears, how do people go about reducing insulin resistance? I'm sure it's not as easy as just losing weight per se, but how do you go about reversing those numbers? Well, first of all, we have to ask, what is a pro-inflammatory diet? Okay. It really composed of one of three components. It could be too many things you're consuming, like too many calories. It could be, Daisy, uh, too many uh, simple sugars. It could be basically too many omega-6 fatty acids or too much saturated fat. Any one of those will cause insulin resistance, but it also could be things you're not consuming enough of. You're not consuming enough of omega-3 fatty acids or polyphenols. Polyphenols are the chemicals that give fruits and vegetables their color. And finally, you have an unbalanced ratio of protein to carbohydrate in your diet. Now, the more of those three things you have, the more pro-inflammatory your diet is and the more likely you are to develop insulin resistance. How soon can you see the benefits of reducing the inflammation and bringing down the insulin resistance? Well, that's the beauty of science. You're not guessing, you're actually <laughs> testing. The data is pretty clear. It takes four days. Wow. Say, wow, <laughs> easy peasy. That's the good news. Now, how long does it take for insulin resistance to reemerge? Re Probably not that long. <laughs> About four days. You say, well, therefore, if I want to keep insulin resistance low or I really not have any at all, that's the definition of wellness. This is a lifelong program. Say, mm -hmm. you got it. Basically, you're using food as if it were a drug to basically eliminate insulin resistance in each of your cells. And by doing so, what you've done, everything in your power, far more powerful than any drug, 
to basically maintain wellness as long as possible. Now, what about supplements? We hear a lot about berberine and some of these, you know, weight loss drugs that have impacts on blood sugar control. Do these factor into insulin resistance at all? Would you recommend them? Well, some of these drugs you mentioned are basically supplements like berberine. Uh, how does berberine work? Uh, I don't know. It is used in traditional Chinese medicine. That's true. But how does it work? Now we know. It poisons your mitochondria. Well, that's not good. So, so that, <laughs> what's, that sounds bad. Say, so, yes, because it's the mitochondria in each one of your cells that produces the energy that keeps us alive. So I say, well, if I take a, a, a supplement that poisons the mitochondria, bad things can only probably happen. Correct the mundo. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you're saying, okay, that's probably not a good choice. What about this new generation of weight loss drugs? Well, what they do they send signals to the brain to say, stop eating. And if you stop eating, what's going to happen? You're going to lose weight. Right. Now, that's good news. The bad news is there's some uh, downsides. You stop eating, and usually the first thing you eat less of is protein. And so now you start to unbalance the ratio of protein to carbohydrate. And as a consequence, about 40% of the weight loss, the people on these weight loss drugs uh, uh, see, comes not from fat, but it comes from lean body mass. Which say, is not what you want. <laughs> so, so I say, well, what in the heck is lean body mass? Well, lean body mass are things like the weight of your liver or your kidney or your heart or your brain saying, oh, wait a minute, I'm losing weight, but it means I'm actually taking the weight from my vital organs, saying, correct. And so this does not have long-term, uh, you know, great benefits saying, mm -hmm. say it's a starvation. So the fact is, can you basically replicate the benefits of these, uh, for say supplements like berberine or gastric, uh, uh, inhibitors by the diet? The answer is yes, you can. And that's what I've been trying to do for the last 40 years to really crack this very complex puzzle of how our diet can affect our metabolism. And that's why I call this a really overall uh, umbrella, metabolic engineering. Mm -hmm. That once you understand the nuances of how our diet can affect our metabolism, we can go in there and re-engineer. We can reprogram the metabolism in each of our cells. And what that does, it allows us to eliminate insulin resistance. And what are the benefits to you? Yes, you will live longer. You'll live better, but most importantly, you'll lose excess body fat. And who doesn't want that? Exactly. You know, what I love, Dr. Sears, is you've talked about insulin for decades now, you know, and it seems that you've really just continued to build on how important it is to keep it in the appropriate range and in the right zone. But this new idea around, you know, the metabolic engineering and the programming, um, you've really taken it to a new level here on, on what your diet can do at the molecular level to, to change all of these hormones um, and keep them in the right range. And it's really at the genetic level. Mm -hmm. And that's why basically the concept of the zone has constantly evolved. Why? Because science is constantly evolving. And yeah. so we now begin to understand the power, the power of our diet, not to basically say, oh, I'll lose weight. No, the diet can control the expression of your genes. It's the ultimate expression of genetic engineering. So we say, well, look at those big bi biotech companies. That's like tinker toys. <laughs> diet and metabolism is incredibly complex. But if you have the right system, that's what we call metabolic engineering. Then you have the ability to basically go there and reprogram the metabolism of each of your cells. I, let me use an example. Let's say your car doesn't work. Will you take it to the doctor? You would not. No, would, <laughs> I don't know how to fix this. You say, you're right. I'll take it to an automotive engineer. He's called a mechanic. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, I'll twist this. I'll twist that. Works like a charm. The same is true of basically metabolic engineering. Most doctors have no knowledge of metabolism. It's incredibly complex. But with metabolic engineering, you can go to the heart of everything that's causing you problems in this life. That is, I'm gaining weight. I'm not thinking clearly. Uh, I'm aging faster. I've got chronic disease. Each of these, the uh, this common soil of all of these is increased insulin resistance. 
Well, you've definitely expanded upon what people might define wellness on their own as just in terms of a feeling. But, you know, I think what you've walked through is obviously what's the negatives of, you know, having uncontrolled inflammation, what happens with insulin resistance, but that the hopeful side is that within four days of just changing your diet, doing the pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory diet, I should say, you really can start to reverse some of this and get your body into a state of wellness. Yeah, that's the easy part. The hard part is doing it for the rest of your life. Well, Dr. Sears, thanks so much for your time today and sharing uh, and enlightening us on uh, wellness. Thank you very much. For more on this subject and many other topics on the science of wellness, go to drsears.com.